Okay, so let's talk about the phylum Nematoda. So this is still, we're talking about that phylum level of classification. So like the phylum Platyhelminthes, like the phylum Annelida, the phylum Nematoda is an example of a worm, but these are round worms. So they are not segmented and they don't even look segmented. So these are not segmented. When we look at the roundworms, they have a characteristic in that they have a pseudocelum. You might remember that the other phyla that we talked about that has a pseudocelum would be the rotiferans have a pseudocelum. So that means that they don't have a true body cavity. It's partially, only partially lined with mesoderm. But they do have bilateral symmetry. They have a brain. They have... Um, um, a complete digestive system. So I'll put complete. They have a mouth and an anus. So when we look at the nematodes, we have free living nematodes and endoparasites. The other group that we looked at that had this, for example, would have been the phylum platyhelminthes. So one example of a free-leaving nematode that has been studied extensively is one that is called C. elegans. And C. elegans, that's its genus name. Elegans is its species name, so I might underline it. And it's called elegans because it's elegant, right? Um, one of the cool things about these is using a light microscope, you can actually see through these. They're kind of transparent. They're tiny little microscopic. I think maybe, I think I've seen them with my with my eyes, but it's best to look at them under a microscope. And they have like 1,000 cells, but they have skin cells, they have muscle cells, they have nerve cells, right? So they have all of the same tissue that we have, but they are microscopic. So the cool thing about th these is, is that they're used to study development. And that is interesting. So even human development, um, sometimes they use this as a study model for studying development. Um, and they are actually also important because they live in soil. So they digest microbes and they excrete nitrogenous waste. And that might be important for the soil health. Oops, I did that, spelled that wrong. Excrete. Okay, so that is um, important for soil health. The problem with these, um, with this in general, is, is that there are endoparasites, nematode endoparasites, even on plants. And so oftentimes what scientists and what people do is they would kill all of the nematodes by using a nematocide. So let's say you have a problem with parasitic nematodes. A nematocide is like a pesticide but it is specialized for killing nematodes. And so um, this might be um, something that you would do, but you would also kill your, uh, your free living nematodes as well as your parasites. So that could be a, a negative outcome to um, soil health and soil fertility. So let's look at the endoparasites.